Mm. Thank you so much for coming in. And as usual, I wanted to uh, introduce a little bit about our international coffee hour structure and also our Zoom feature. Um, so throughout our um, event, the first two sections will be a slight presentation, but for today, we will just make it very easy easy because we don't have co host and it will be only featured on our CGE for today. And then the second part will be like uh, the popular event uh, for Chef Jesse to cook us uh, to do a little bit of cooking demo for everyone. Um, so for the first two part, they will be recorded. But for the last part, when we enter into the breakout room, everyone could be easily like be unmuted and it won't be recorded. And um, I do want to say thank you for everyone's support at this supporting like challenging time as usual. And uh, CG is always appreciated for everyone's like continuing support and uh, like being here to like um, be part of this event. That's all that drive us to be here and uh, till the end. So like, um, thank you so much. And I hope everyone has been having a very, very nice final. Um, I've been officially done with my finals. I hope everyone's feeling so released as me right now. Um, and uh, um, I also want to say that our next coffee hour will happen on the January. So this one is actually the last of year of 2020. So it's just a, such a year and, um, and it's um, the, the, the last one of this year's coffee hour. The new one will happen on the January 1st week of the uh, start of semester, which will be the January 8th. That will be our first coffee hour for year 2021. So I hope everyone will show up at that time too. But I will just jump in and to Chef Jesse's part. Um, so Chef Jesse is going to cook us the Yorkshire pudding today. Um, and um, whenever, Jesse, you're ready, feel free to jump in. Great. Thanks, Sean. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's our last coffee hour and um, yeah, it's been quite the year. Um, we are back here in the Globe Kitchen for one, one last coffee hour and uh, I think we're going to keep them virtual uh, for the springtime too. So um, keep, a, keep a look out for that. Uh, today we've got Yorkshire pudding. Uh, this is a pudding from England. Um, my wife actually suggested doing it today. So sorry, Herman, I did say I was gonna do that uh, roll cake, but I'm gonna save it for spring when we hopefully have a bigger audience. Um, but so Yorkshire pudding, it is, uh, it's a classic from, from England, from Yorkshire. Uh, this is a county in Northeast England, um, kind of culturally significant, got its own kind of culture there. Uh, some definitely some, you know, interesting cuisine aspects. and. Uh, this is one of them. It, although this pudding has spread out through through uh, England and throughout the world, uh, it's popular in America now. It's kind of known as popovers here. Although um, I'm trying to think of any bakeries, I, I can't think of any bakeries or anything that I've gotten it at. It's really good, fresh, fresh baked. Um, so the really cool thing about this is that it's super simple and uh, it requires very basic ingredients that you're going to have in your house most likely. And uh, it, it, the results are very, uh, you know, extraordinary. You know, it's this delicious puffed up uh, kind of pastry. Uh, and, you know, you can do a lot of different things with it. It's really versatile. So uh, it's a family recipe that I'm sharing with you. My wife's grandmother was from England. And although this recipe is pretty standard across, uh, you know, all recipes for this, there's some slight variations. Um, you know, this is, it's pretty much a standard, but it did come from her, her grandmother. So, um, all right. So first references of Yorkshire pudding, or sorry, of this pudding, it was first called dripping pudding. And the first reference in, in writing in a cookbook was, uh, 1737. Uh, and, um, after that, the name, uh, Yorkshire pudding came about in 1747 in, in another cookbook, uh, it was called, um, Art of Cooking Made Easy by Hannah Glass. But 
So I've got a excerpt from the first uh, recipe uh, from the first book when it was called dripping pudding. So we can we can get a grip on this English language here. See if we can decipher what they actually mean here. I love these old recipes because it's they don't give quantities or anything like that. They just kind of give you the roundabout way of making things. So here we go. Um, make a good batter as for pancakes. Put in a hot toss pan over the fire with a bit of butter to fry the bottom a little. Then put the pan and butter under a shoulder of mutton. And mutton is uh, sheep. So they're, they're roasting uh, this shoulder of sheep, the fatty cut of sheep over a fire. Back in the 1700s, they're cooking on a hearth. So they're cooking over a fire. And I think in Yorkshire, they were, they were known for uh, coal too. I think they had a lot of coal there. So it's probably like a coal fire, maybe a wood fire. All right, so back to the, the recipe here from 1737. Uh, instead of a dripping pan, uh so you're gonna so what they're saying is you're gonna put this pan with the pancake batter under the mutton as it's cooking to collect the drippings of fat from this meat rather than a dripping pan because they're gonna collect the drippings from this no matter what because the fat's dripping on the fire it's gonna smoke it's gonna cause a you know a mess essentially and uh, you know you're gonna want to save everything from this you want to use all the components of this the the meat you're gonna use the fat and everything so um Let's see, keeping frequently shaking it by the handle, it will be a light and savory and fit to take up when your mutton is enough, then turn in a dish and serve it hot. So the recipe, the modern recipe is different, um, but this is the beginnings and uh, basically the same ingredients. We're gonna add salt um, and we're also going to use just like a vegetable oil, although uh, this is a popular, uh, in America, this is a popular side dish for a uh, Christmas dinner uh, because oftentimes a lot of people for Christmas are going to do a, a, a rib roast. And so that's a beef roast, it's really fatty, and it, you know, drips a lot of fat. And so after that roast is cooked, they're going to collect that fat and use that fat for the dish. Now, the difference in the modern technique for this is that we're going to use the vegetable oil right now, but we are going to put the vegetable oil into the pan first and superheat up our pan and our oil. And then we're gonna pour the batter into the pan. And that's what's gonna create this puffiness and it's gonna get lots of height. Um, and so I think the texture of the old recipe was probably more dense and a little more flat. It's probably not as puffy as this is gonna turn out. So two different ways you can do this. You can do a 12 uh, muffin pan or you can do a nine inch pie pan. If you do the muffin pan, we're going to do about a teaspoon of oil in the bottom of each one. And you could just use canola oil or vegetable oil, or if you have um, animal fat, you know, from a roast, that's great too. It's definitely going to give it a little more flavor, but um, really the fat of the, the roast is not going to really taste like too much. There's a lot of salts on your roast or pepper in your roast, that, that kind of flavor will definitely impart into the oil. All right, so then if you're gonna do the pie plate, we're gonna do a quarter cup of oil. And we're just gonna pour it in. Okay, from here, I've got my oven up to 450 degrees. Let's clean this oil off the top. And then we're just gonna pop this in the oven for about five minutes. Put both of these in. I'm gonna kind of swirl this oil around a little bit so it gets on the sides too. You're gonna to wanna to have a nice pair of oven mix for this because these pans are going to be hot when they come out. All right, so when you heard I was making Yorkshire pudding today, you probably thought I was going to make something sweet. Uh, but this is definitely savory. And that is because in uh, uh, English from England, uh, pudding means a few different things. Um, it can mean, originally, uh, it meant uh, meat that is stuffed or encased by uh, animal products like uh, intestines. So it really was uh, a name for sausages, you know, different types of sausages. And, in particular, there's a, um, a pork blood sausage, uh, black pudding, uh, and that is kind of one of the original uh, pudding, you know, 
recipes or putting, you know, foods. And it, it was really just, uh, you know, pork meat, pork blood, stuffed inside uh, pork intestine, and then it was boiled or steamed. Uh, and so eventually that uh, branched out into different types of sausages. And, uh, and then it turned into um, different baked, or not baked, like different pastries, like cakes that were steamed or boiled. And so pudding can also meet in England, like a dessert course. So the, the sweet course after a main meal, uh, pudding is a generic term for that. And so it doesn't mean any kind of particular sweet, but just the sweet course. Uh, but there's, um, like uh, for coffee hour and we did this our very first, actually this is funny because our very first coffee hour we did virtually was our sticky toffee pudding. It was the Irish one. So yes, we're finishing with the pudding recipe. So yeah, that, I guess that makes sense. Um, and so yeah, that is a cake that is now baked uh, and they call that a pudding and that cake is soaked in a, uh, like a toffee sauce and just like caramel. Um, but yeah, so different, different ways to uh, understand pudding. This recipe, uh, Yorkshire pudding, it falls in the savory category of pudding. Uh, and it is, you know, I guess it has wheat in it. It's not stuffed in any animal stuff, but I guess the in the old recipe with the meat dripping on it, maybe that is why they called it pudding. But you know, not, it doesn't really fit really perfectly into either of those categories, but it is still a pudding. If we had somebody from England on, on the line today, maybe they could give us a little more, yeah, nobody, Probably nobody from England, but anyways, so there is one uh, variation on this recipe where they'll take, um, it's called toad in the hole, and they'll take a sausage, and um, when we get to the point of putting the batter in, they'll add cooked sausage or, you know, leftover stewed meat, and they'll put it into the batter once it gets poured in to the pan, and they'll bake it, and this will encase the sausage or encase the meat, and so maybe that's why they called it a pudding because it, it could be the casing for, for other meats, you know. Um, anyway, so I've got a little trivia for anybody interested today. I've got another minute here. Well, let's do the trivia in a second. I think that this might be ready. Let's take, this, let's take a look here. So we want our oil to be pretty much smoke hot, 450 degrees. Let's see if we're looking good here. I got a little water dripping there. Uh, that is pretty hot. All right. Yep. It's looking pretty good. So we're going to do one at a time here. So we keep it hot. You want to keep it hot and move pretty quick. Actually, let me pop it in real quick. We got to mix up our batter real fast. <laughs> this will cool down too much and it won't get too hot in here. Okay. So the, the beauty of this is that this batter is just so simple to make here. It's so quick. So we've got one cup of flour. We're going to do two variations too. So we got one cup of flour, one teaspoon of salt. So we'll do both. I'm just going to get a whisk. You're going to mix up these lumps in there a little bit. Get that salt dispersed really well. All right. This one is a water version. And so it's just one cup of water. So equal parts water and flour, and then three eggs. If you want to make a small batch of this, if you just want to make four in a muffin pan, you can do that. Just do a third cup flour, a third cup water, and one egg. Okay, and so now we're going to whisk our eggs. And all of it together, and that is pretty much it. We want to whisk it until the lumps are mostly gone. There shouldn't be a ton of lumps. Go ahead with our eggs and our flour here. All right. So nowadays, this is served oftentimes uh, for the typical Sunday lunch in England, where it's roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, and vegetables. And then the Yorkshire pudding is filled with gravy a lot of times, like an onion and meat gravy for an appetizer. And then, you know, it can also be sweet. I mean, it's, I don't think it's typically sweet there, but it can be, if you don't put too much salt in it, you can fill it with sweet things, fruits, whipped cream, that kind of stuff. I saw a couple recipes 
or where people will use this as a profiterole and so they'll fill it with some sweet stuff. And I don't think that's very popular in England. All right, so nice and whisk. All right. Now let's pull out our, well, let's do the big one first. We'll do the pie plate first. Not sure why that's wet right there. Okay. So our oil's coming out. And this was the milk one, and we're just going to pour it right in. And I'm going to use a little bit of whisk, or sorry, a spatula. And we're going to quickly get it back in the oven. And the oil is going to come around the side. That's fine. Put this back in. does very hot so you definitely want to be careful there now we're going to go ahead and put not quite halfway full on each of these so a little less than a quarter cup this is going to expand like crazy it's going to puff up i think it's it's not a yorkshire pudding unless it's at least four inches tall i think that's the standard that we're looking for a lot of the American recipes actually uh, include extra egg than the English recipes. I was kind of comparing my grandparent-in-law's recipe and the, Eng and the Americans want to put a little bit more egg in there. And I think it gives it a little bit more lip, but it also makes it more eggy. Uh, so I stuck with the original. All right, so this is going to go in quick. And then Laura's going to come around and we're going to watch this in action here. And then I'll... See if we can get some trivia going here. Okay. So, well, let's let's look at the. Can we see the? Yeah, it'll start going. You can see the pie plate around the edges starting to creep up a little bit. Um, all right. So, popular culture references for pudding, English pudding. What song? from 1979 included these lyrics. If you don't eat your meat, you can't have any pudding. How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your Any Anybody uh, think they could figure that one out? Very popular song from a soundtrack album. Oh yeah, that was, oh. Rebecca, you got it too fast. <laughs> well, Rebecca nailed it. <laughs> All right, she got it. So that's not the song. Yeah, what's the song? That's a, okay. So Pink Floyd is the band, English band. The Wall. Oh, The Wall. All right, but what that that was the soundtrack. What was the name of the uh, the song? Oh, that's not the song. That's not so. That's the album that it's from. Yeah, that's <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> That's hard, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. More clues. So, well, there's it's so it's a song that's on the album The Wall, which was the soundtrack album for the movie that they did The Wall, 1979. <laughs> You're not so old, Her Herman. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it was from the song Another Brick in the Wall, Part Two. Part Two. And it is the classic song. It's one of their most famous songs. It's like in the top five of their famous songs where they have the school kids singing. We don't need no education. We don't need no thought control. And at the end, the schoolmaster is yelling at them about how they have to eat their meat before they can have their pudding, which was in reference to their dessert, which this is not a dessert today, but it is a pudding. <laughs> So uh, that is my popular culture reference for the day. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, exactly, Herman. Like, I'm not exactly sure why this is a pudding either, but it is. <laughs> oh, that's Rebecca, okay. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had some more trivia, but that's all I got for today. As we can see, yeah, I wish our, uh, 
our pudding is rising. Maybe we can lift it up a little bit, get over the edge. All right, there we go. So we can see it kind of getting a little brown and it's starting to puff. The whole thing is going to blow up like a balloon. And then for the pipe plate, this one will pull it out and we'll cut it into pieces for, for serving like bread, you know, or just like triangles, kind of more like pizza, I guess. And then the muffin tin ones, those ones will be individually serving and they're great because you can fill them with the gravy. It's really easy to portion. And so the difference we did, we did one with water and one with milk. The water one will come out more crisp and, uh, you know, it's still going to be rich from the egg, but the milk one is going to be kind of more sweet and, and um, more tender and just, you know, a little more rich from, from that fat from the milk. But so these bake for a little bit here. Does anybody have any questions or anything they want to shoot at me for a uh, last chance for coffee hour here? Um, oh, not Alex that. Yeah, Alex was like commenting. <laughs> okay. Becca, you have a question? Yes. <laughs> I think Becca has a question. All right, you can see these guys popping up. Ooh. It doesn't take a little bit. This So this recipe is, is great because you can make it at the last minute too. You know, so you do your roast, you have it setting. Sorry, go ahead, Young. Yeah, sorry. Is this supposed to be a dessert or it should be like main entry, like when you eat with main entries? Right, yeah. No, this is a side dish to your main entree. So the side dish to roast meat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Something with a lot of gravy, something with a stew. Yeah, exactly, Rebecca. Or um, you know, something very saucy. This is great with it. Mm -hmm. um, Rebecca had a plain one yesterday. She did not like it. She thought it was bland. And she obviously doesn't have much English blood in it. My wife had four of them last night and she loved every single one. So oh, what yeah, are you eat with it? Like like roasted beef or like any stewed beef or, or... Yeah. Oh. yeah. So ro roast beef and gravy is, is the thing. Um, you know, that, that I mean, that's the classic thing, you know, to serve it with meat or have it as a first course before you eat your meat. So historically back in the day, uh, they would they would make a beef gravy or a, or you know a gravy from the sheep or whatever whatever meat bread meat they're using and they would use that on as a first course with this pudding. And then with the the main course when they got the meat, they would serve it with like a some kind of like a parsley sauce or like a herb sauce or something like that. And the hope was is what they how they explained it is that um the guests would eat this and get filled up and then not to eat too much meat when it came to the expensive stuff and so um that's how they kind of justified or explained the serving this as an appetizer but then also people that didn't have you know a lot of means this could have been the the, the meal and then they would put leftover meats into this and then this would be a meal on its own and that's where the original toad in the hole is the you know, is this with sausages in it. And so they would have put a couple sausages into the uh, pie plate there, and then they would cut it up and there'd be chunks of sausage with this as well. Yeah, because when it's baking right now, I'm just like picturing, actually when you put those roasted beef and like gravy, like in those muffins, that would be so good. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. And so yeah, the, I got some more stuff here. We got, um, so the word, the English word pudding uh, originally came from the French word boudin. Uh, so the French word boudin is for um, a blood sausage in France. And then somehow that came over to England and they, they, you know, it, you know, slightly altered to pudding or maybe they were more like pudding and pudding, pudding. Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting that it was originally French or the, the root is French. And then um, some other sweet puddings, we got um, a treacle sponge pudding. That's pretty interesting. So that's like a sponge cake that's uh, steamed with treacle on top, which is just like a sugar syrup. 
and then that's served with like a custard, which we would call a pudding. Um, and then there's also the classic, it's called spotted dick. And that is a steamed cake with currants in it. And the currants create these little spots and it's, it's a steamed cake, um, which is really uh, popular over in England. And you can actually get a can. You can get the treacle, the sponge treacle canned here, and you can get the spotted dick. It comes in a can and you pop it open and you warm it up and you have your English pastry specialty there. All right, so yeah, you can see it's going, going wild now. They're both getting some nice crispy edges, definitely turning brown, um, liking the looks of this. I think Herman had a question about the crust. Is the okay. crust similar to pot pies? Is the crust, sorry? Is this, is this crust similar to pot pies? Oh, pot pies? Um, I would say probably not. This is like a, it definitely gets crispy, but it's, it's like tender in the middle. So pot pie to me is more like a pie crust. And this is more like a egg batter pancake that turned crispy and still tender in the middle. So it's crispy and tender and it's more thin than, than a pancake. So it's uh, kind of like uh, Dutch babies are kind of like this. That's another name for this kind of thing, um, which are like thin pancakes. And then the popovers is another thing, but uh, I don't think that this would work for pot pie because it has to have this super, it has to be very, very hot. And it, it can't, if it has that liquid that's attached, you know, if it's in certain contact with a liquid, it's not going to get hot enough so that it, it blows up like this. It, yeah, the pipe plate is really blown up. All right, so these are getting pretty good here. We want to take it for, you can probably cook these for a little bit longer, but I'm going to pull them out here so we can take a look at them more closely. Here, let me grab a fork. But I just want to comment you on the ad, like, um, it said, like, original, the word is called puding. It's actually very similar to Chinese. Like, in Chinese, we call it puding. It's very similar actually, puding. For a sausage? No, for the pudding. Oh, for pudding. Oh, okay. We call it puding. Is that for, like, a milk, like, a, a thickened milk sweet dessert? Yes, exactly. Oh. Interesting. All right, here we go. For some reason, this is leaking. Stay away. All right. That can cook for a little bit more. This can cook for a little bit longer, too, but it's looking pretty good. I want you all to get some time in your breakout rooms today. The last chance to hang out here at coffee hour. So for this, these are just gonna pop right out. Boom. And then you can let them cool um, on a wire rack. And then you can see there's these holes in the center and then they're, they're totally hollow too. So let's, you remember we didn't really put much batter in there. So they create this kind of puffy, semi-eggy delicious little pudding. Yeah. These could actually cook a little bit longer. We'll let them go a little bit more. Um, but I wanted to pull them out and let y'all see them. So anyways, uh, thanks again for joining for our last coffee hour. We will be back in January, hopefully bringing you many new exciting and new recipes and groups. Um, and Herman, I promise I will do a roll cake in the spring. We will have plenty of time uh and so I, I do love a, a good roll cake so um thanks again y'all have a great holiday and happy new year's uh, i'll see you in january thank you jesse thank you